I'll make you a deal. I'll forgive the session fees if you'll be the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. I told the Opry they were making a big mistake, but <laughs> whatever. Here we they, are. They don't seem interested in my opinion, so yeah, let's do this. Welcome back to Certified Country. I'm so excited. We are here at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville with Chris Young on such an exciting night. Uh, yeah, I would say probably one of the most exciting nights of my life. I'm debut was more than 10 years ago now. Yes. How well do you remember that moment? I, I actually told somebody this earlier. What I remember most was that they put me in a room, but they didn't tell me what I was supposed to do. I mean, obviously <laughs> you're supposed to go out and perform on the stage, but I yeah. didn't know like what side of the stage it went on. I didn't know when I was supposed to leave the room. Like I, I was there by myself. You know, I, I was really, really lost and oh. really nervous and excited. And it was just a really, really cool night though. You had a pretty incredible reaction to being invited. You picked Vince Kill up. And everybody was like, <laughs> you know, Vince isn't a small guy. And I'm like, well. The adrenaline I'm, was going. I'm 6'4", 250. I just picked him up. I wasn't thinking about it at the time. And uh, then it was really funny because I was like, oh great, this photo is going to be everywhere. And it is. What is Brad Paisley in store for tonight? You know, everybody's asked me, they're like, well, so what, what's going to happen tonight? It's like, I, I really don't know. Yeah. It's like I've, I've never actually been to anyone else's induction, so I, I haven't even gotten to see it secondhand, and it's mine, so it's the first time I've been inducted, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I love Brad. I'm sure he will make fun of me. Last call, last chance, last song, last dance. Sometimes you just don't know where that's gonna be. That's gonna be. Tell me about your relationship with Chris. Well, he is one of the sweetest, greatest people that we've ever had in this format. I mean, you talk about a class act, a great guy. I mean, he just doesn't have any of that thing that you would consider a negative about somebody who's famous and successful. There's no ego in Chris. He's so willing to be a friend to anyone he meets and, and he belongs in this place. That, that is exactly what the Opry has always been. I mean, there's so many stories over the years of the camaraderie of this building and mm -hmm. the, and what it means to be a part of this. And Chris just epitomizes that in the way he lives his life and the way he is towards people. Now, did you see that Chris picked up Vince Gill when he was asked? Are you at all worried about what he has in store for you tonight? Uh, if he tries to pick me up, I'm not giving him the statue and he can <laughs> suck it. I text him on the way over here. Actually, I was like, thank you so much for being here tonight, man. It means a lot to me and he goes, I sent him multiple messages trying to get him to reconsider, but they wouldn't, so I guess I'm going to show up, which is exactly <laughs> what you'd expect him to say. Yeah, that's typical Brad Paisley fashion, I yeah. think. Yeah. Chris told me about the text message that you sent him earlier. Very blasé. That's me. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I could see he was starting down the path of it means so I, I love you, man. It means so much that you're going to do this tonight, and I did not want to go there yet. You just cut him off. So I was like, yeah, I tried to. I, I told the opera they were making a big mistake, but <laughs> whatever. Here we they, are. They don't seem interested in my opinion, so yeah, let's do this. Now, what will you be performing tonight? It's me by myself with a guitar, so I get to decide. You just get up there and wing it. Yeah, I'll look at these people and see if they, you know, try to read what they might want to hear. All right, I love I, it. I love, it's one of my favorite things to do is, we play here with the band a lot, but the, there's nothing like walking out on that stage with a guitar. You want to be here when it's someone that matters to you going in, or if you, mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity to be a part of an invitation or an induction or inducing, whatever they call it, <laughs> ingestion. Yes, I think that's the word. Then you want to be here. Yeah. When they think of me, they think of you. How well do you remember your own Opry induction? I remember it really well, because one of the reasons I wanted to be a member was, I, and, and that's something Chris will experience now, is no matter what happens in your career, you ever feel like singing to an audience full of people in an incredibly cool place, in a historic place where they love country music, they have to sort I think they have to let me do it. No matter how <laughs> old I get, no matter how washed up I get, they have to let, if I call up and say, hey, I'm coming next week, I think they kind of got to say all right. Now we have to talk a little bit about the timing of all of this, coming off of, you know, what I would presumed to be probably one of the worst nights of your life um, in Vegas and then coming here. How are you, first of all? I'm okay. Um, you know, everybody's going to cope with that 
in their own way. I wasn't even supposed to be there. A couple of my friends were playing. Obviously, Jason Aldean was playing. Mm -hmm. I'm on tour with him. Kane Brown was there, who's going to be on my tour this year. So I was like, man, I'm just going to go down and, and hang out with everybody. This, this will be, uh, you know, what you always expect a concert to be, which is a fun night. And obviously, the most terrifying night of my life. Uh, I had a show two days later in California, and I talked a lot to, you know, my, my family, my managers, my crew, my guys on the road that were already out there, and was like, you know, I think I want to play. What do you guys want to do? Music is, is something that can heal, and, um, you know, everybody's going to cope in their own way, but that was the right decision for me. Yeah, we're winning, we're losing, when we're losing sleep. So let's talk about the album, Losing Sleep. One of my records that I am so insanely proud of, probably just as proud of this as anything that I've ever made. I love this album. And yeah. there's so many really cool things about this. You know, it's the first album I've ever done where I co-wrote everything, uh, which was not intentional. I would never go into a record going, putting that pressure on myself of I'm gonna write everything. Where I was having a conversation with some people from my label and they're like, well, what do you have? Like, you know, what, what do you have done? I was like, well, do you wanna hear some stuff? and played him about six, seven songs, and Randy Goodman, who's the head of my label, was like, mm -hmm. I love all of those. <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, we can go cut a record, I guess. When it comes to us, every single 